All right. Thank you for joining us again for another episode of the Dental Elements Podcast, episode number 28. Thank you, everybody, for helping us celebrate our one-year anniversary. We truly enjoyed having you guys um, along with us. Thank you to Immedent um, for your special donations and also to Aflex X Assist Arm. To receive discounts on those products, you can use Dental Elements at checkout with Immedent and then use code AFLEXX1 for a flex assist star. Thank you also to our side gig and solopreneur series guests for their generous donations as well. To learn more about their products and to receive uh, discounts on their products as well, you can visit our website at rootyouon.com. R-O-O-T, letter U, on.com. In today's episode, we are celebrating a new podcast, a uh, dental podcast with four amazing, energetic, super fun ladies who um, have joined together to um, tell the truth. So their podcast is called The Truth Scalers. They're going to scale back the truth, and I think they really are. So it should be interesting and fun. Uh, today, In today's episode, we talk about so many different topics that I'll just let you find out for yourself. The amazing host of this new podcast, Carrie, a.k.a. Dr. Carter. Dr. Karen Gordon, who is also now a chiropractor. What great combination is that? Oh, my gosh. And then Astrid Curtis and Tamika Lee. So please uh, give cheers to these ladies and be sure to subscribe not only to our podcast, but also to their podcast and all, uh, all dental podcasts. Really, when you're in your car and you're trying to find an episode, for me, if I subscribe to a podcast, honestly, if you're driving and you're not subscribed, you only see so many podcasts. I want the ones I want to see. I want them to pop up there so I can um, go through them better and be able to um, enjoy different um, varieties because I like to listen to. I listen to all of them out there and I love them all. So please support everybody and support each other and the assistance. All right, you guys have a great day and uh, thanks. Cheers. I'm excited to finally meet you guys. I've been looking forward to this. It's nice to meet you. Nice, yeah. to, meet you. nice to meet you as well. Yeah, nice to meet everybody. We just like to hear your stories and learn about your new podcast. So I thought what we could do is start out, since there's so many of us, whoever wants to start, if you just want to take a few minutes and give us a little piece of you and let us know your story and how you got to doing this podcast. I'll let Kari start that off because she's kind of the one that found it all, so... <laughs> Um, so I was basically thinking about having one, um, and I talked to Karen about it and we really fished around with the name a couple of times and came up with truth scalers because we wanted to be all about telling the truth. And that's why we say like, um, scaling back the truth for the good, the bad and ugly, because we find that sometimes when you go into the hygiene field, everyone just talks about the good stuff. And then later on, you end up finding out that there's some challenges. So we want to really talk about the challenges that people may go through. When I started really networking on the different Facebook forums, I felt less alone. And I found out that people were having the same challenges that I was having. It wasn't something that was necessarily wrong with me. It's just that we, I wasn't networking enough or having been involved in the different um, memberships and everything like the ADHA or the NDHA, all the different organizations. So I felt very alone. So we really wanted to kind of bring hygiene together and all the different platforms that we do so that we can help our prof- other colleagues or professionals out. So that's what really came about. And so when I linked up with everybody, I really respected what they were doing as far as being working women, having their own businesses and having just a variety of things like Karen being a chiropractor and then Estrita having her own business and then Tamika being very involved in the American Dental Hygiene Association as well as being very involved in empowering women. So I thought that we would all come together and mesh and be able to help our colleagues in different ways. I guess I'll go next. (laughs) So yeah, so I own a dental staffing agency. Um, We service Pennsylvania, Maryland, and Virginia, and I'm also a full-time dental hygienist. I attempt through my staffing agency, and I actually met uh, Carrie through one of our entrepreneur groups that Jasmine Haley runs. 
And then um, from there, I met Karen and Tamika as well. And yeah, I mean, I kind of just meshed really well with the three of them. And, you know, we thought it would be a good idea to kind of talk about a bunch of different stuff. And yeah, I'm excited to see what we can kind of come up with to bring some different things to to the podcast. So you guys are all hygienists? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. All hygienists. Although Karen's a chiropractor Karen. now. Oh, I know. Like, yeah. <laughs> doctor. Doctor. Doctor, doctor Karen. Nice. I love it. I'm just fake doctor. They just call me Dr. Carter, but I'm, it's because I'm, uh, you know, I think I know stuff, but she's the actual doctor licensed and yeah. bona fide. Bona fide. Yeah. Bona fide. That's great. Yeah. You, yeah. How about how did you get to be a chiropractor? Can you hear me, guys? Okay. So, really and truly, working in um, dentistry it has been rough. You know, um, most people I know end up with back pain, neck pain, and um, I felt like I needed to help people more than just from the mouth perspective. And it just so happened that uh, the opportunity came for me where there was opening a school close to where I live. I'm like, I'm going to go to chiropractic school. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> and, and then here I am. But really, I love helping people. So the truth is anything I can do to help someone not just um from you know the mouth perspective but a whole body perspective um that's what I'm all about and I'm glad that I have dentistry as a springboard because it really allowed me to be a better practitioner nice I like when you said the truth is so every time somebody says the truth do you have to like a ding 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 or something (laughs) we should that'd be fine I like that you just you just thought of something there so love it that'll be a a new segment Will there be like a lyo meter as well? All right. <laughs> hey, I, you get fancy, but that sounds pretty good. Um, you know, it'd be like Wendy Williams, you know, the tea. The, the tea. tea is hot. Yes. <laughs> yes. The tea. Well, Cara, you've got the you've got the chair for it. That's a pretty impressive chair. I wish yes, you it is. That is the chair. This is where I do my stuff, man. This is the queen chair. It's Truth one of my chair. favorite chair. I know. I've literally been searching for a chair, not exactly like Kari's, but something very like dramatic and similar. And I like cannot find anything that I actually all like. So you see, all I have finding everything. Can you ship that up have, to Pennsylvania? Yeah, <laughs> I will. Find all I have is my you. crown. I just have I like crown. crown. I have That's the queen's I have. jewels. I have, you know. I know. I saw that. I'm like, you know? I'm not fancy enough here. And the pearls. <laughs> so it takes all you guys to bring all your specialties together too. It does, it does, but but I I think we really uh, balance each other well. I got started talking about burnout because that's what I experienced in the field, Um, and that's one of the reasons I thought I was alone because I've been a dental hygienist for 16 years and in dentistry for 21, I believe, something like that. I'm pregnant, so I forget all these things, but (laughs) I've been in the field for a while, and so I just um, thought sometimes these different situations kept happening to me or was due to my personality that I was getting bullied and everything, but just basically joining the different networks on Facebook and talking to other people really helped me recognize that this is something that all my colleagues going to have, or a number of people have. Even when I was um, in Miami at the um, Miami Fest, I, you know, a lot of different colleagues talked about burnout or they spoke about it. So it's something that unfortunately affects our profession and other professions. So I really wanted to help others in that way. And I think that that's something that we're going to be able to do because we're able to give a lot of different perspectives, such as, you know, um, Karen be able to talk about ergonomics and Tamika being able to talk about empowering others and then Estrita, you know, hey, start tempting, to, you know, find find your unicorn office by by going to different places instead of just staying in one place. So and your freedom. Mm-hmm. And Tamika, how did you end up meeting these ladies? Well, on um, social media, you know, actually, I went through a period of burnout myself and I didn't even realize I was going through burnout. I just was looking for something else, looking for something more. And about two years ago, I regained um, my Georgia Dental Hygiene Association. And um, last year during the pandemic, actually, I was transitioning to a new position. And then under uncertainty, I, I was like, oh my God, I left this job that was great. Um, to be recruited to another position. And the week I was supposed to start, the pandemic, the shutdown. So during that time of uncertainty, I decided to go back to school. I'm pursuing my master's. 
and I started Empower RDH. So I wanted to focus on leadership and productivity and really just empowering hygienists. Uh, I also have a Wednesday empowerment series and that's really my passion, giving back to the profession and showing others that we have struggles, we have triumphs, but we can get through this. Yes. Well, you're certainly a group of badass women, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah, we play no games. I mean, um, Karen has her ribbon cutting cer- um, ceremony for her office Saturday, right, Karen? Yep, this Saturday. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'm multitasking. I'm not doing dentistry. I'm doing chiropractic. So uh, this wow. Saturday we'll be um, unveiling. Finally, we have our name on the door. Yay, name Yay. on the door. <laughs> Where's where's the office at? Where do you practice? Um, we're in Palm Beach Gardens, um, and on Prosperity Farms Road, eleven three eighty Prosperity Farms Road, Suite one t- one ten B. See, in Florida, Florida, oh, Florida. Florida. Florida, nice. Oh, what I do yeah. to be in Florida. Uh, yes, yeah, we'd love you to be here also. I, I would love to. It snowed today, and I almost died. Where do you Keep live? it. <laughs> Where do you live, Pennsylvania? Or? I live in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. So it's like right in the middle, Harrisburg, Philly, Pittsburgh. It's like right smack dab in the middle. Yeah, I heard it's snowing in a few places. It's been We live in Portland, Oregon, me and eight, April and I, and it's been 75 and great. We've had record. Oh, I'm so jealous. Nice. It's, it's nice. cold uh, here. Yeah, I, left, no. I went to Vegas last weekend to get away to get some sunshine, and it was nicer here than it was there, and all I got <laughs> Oh, I'm pretty sure it's nicer in Florida than it is here in Pennsylvania. <laughs> the weather's pretty good. The weather, I mean, we had some storms um, the last, we had, we've had we been having some storms. In fact, about a week or so ago, unfortunately, I lost one of my, fav- oh, my favorite mango trees. Mango so. trees. Oh. I know. Yeah, this, I know. it seemed like a, a tornado was happening in my backyard. So unfortunately, a lot of trees went down and I was just hoping to have a really good harvest. I do nothing to grow this tree, but I was hoping to have a good <laughs> harvest. But other than that, the weather has been great and everything. It was just pretty scary that one time. So yeah, I had to cover all of my plants in hopes that they didn't freeze because I planted all of my garden like two weeks ago, but now we're getting like freezing temperatures and I'm like, come on guys, like don't die already. Well, yeah. The reason I have a black screen is because my allergies are in a full effect. So you don't want to see my, uh, Aww. Allergy ridden face. I <laughs> no, know. That's okay. I, I, we I we, we that live in Florida. Thing. We know. Yeah, I have allergies. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I if I had made it to the second round of Dinner She's Got Talent, I was going to talk about that and everything. <laughs> I was going to talk about my hypochondric ways. And oh lord! I thought, I thought, yeah, Karen knows. Don't and let thought, her Google. I thought I had. I that's what was in my speech. I said I'm not allowed on WebMD. No, you're <laughs> okay. not. No, you're not. No, you're because not. I thought I've had coronavirus like 20 times and it's always been allergies. Like, it's like if you would just take your Claritin, like, you'd be okay. <laughs> how, did your, how did your speech go? I haven't got to watch it yet. Is there a way we can watch it? Because I was gone. Yeah, that. yeah. I shared it on all my social media platforms. Like, I haven't got the actual footage yet. They're going to be giving that to us soon. But I have, you know, what people sent me. So I shared it on my Instagram, my in the Facebook group. Um, on her my- speech was mic drop bomb tastic. It was I've awesome. Heard. I can't you wait. Did an awesome job. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yes. I I was really nervous. Well, so I didn't tell at all. Well, I I put myself up. I played all kind of like gangster music before. <laughs> <laughs> Like okay, me. okay, I'll take that strategy. <laughs> and everything like that. So I pumped myself up, but I was really nervous. But I was proud of what I I did, and it was it was um a pretty big speech for me. So I was proud of everything, and you know the topic was diversity and cultural competency. So. I know that it can be a iffy topic for some people. People don't always want to hear. It's a necessary topic, but it makes people mm-hmm. uncomfortable, and some people don't want to hear it, or they, you know, they think you're blaming them and they didn't do anything. Right. So I just put it out there. And I related it to myself and everything like that. So it was really good, and it was fun yeah. to be there. I was surrounded by amazing colleagues, made a lot of different connections, like. So many people did awesome. Yeah, lots of great people, a lot of great yeah. speakers. So many speakers, they did really, really good. And what I liked is that everyone was so supportive of one another and everything. And like, even after the fact, 
everyone sent me like pictures because I didn't do a lot of the different activities because I am pregnant. Like I'm dropping this baby in a week and a half and everything. So I just wanted to, you know, stay kind of secluded and make sure that nothing happened and I was safe. But people, even when my picture was up and I wasn't there, people took pictures. Like they had this big boat with um, a big screen on it and had my, my face and everyone's faces on it. And someone sent me pictures of that so that was just nice that people were just nice and supportive and that yeah different- and you can show your baby too because your baby was there you say look here look here <laughs> now, <laughs> he definitely is here he's huge <laughs> six pounds at least yeah i went to the doctor today he's six pounds three ounces right now so uh, when's your due date then five five cinco five. de mayo oh nice i think april's birthday is around there at least yeah be prepared for a stubborn child if they're a tourist <laughs> yes my son is May 4th and yep, definitely stubborn, but great. Yes. Super excited for you and congratulations on giving your speech and working through your fear. And now you can help other people work through Yeah, that's, that's what I try to do. I have my book, The Ultimate Guide for Dental Hygienist Burnout. That's available on Amazon through the free Kindle app. So I have that. And then I have the Facebook group. Guys, what's my group called? I'm praying oh for my you. gosh. Burnout. Prevention, oh. burnout prevention. <laughs> and and yeah. Log. It's, How to it's avoid. Dental, dental hygienist. Prevention, dental hygiene is burnout prevention. Hold on, I'll Google it. Recovery <laughs> options, career <laughs> options. I don't know. When you're pregnant, you forget a lot of stuff. That's one it's, thing it's, about it's, the speech. I was just like, oh, Lord. It's Ted Dental Talk. hygienist, burnout, prevention, recovery, career options. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. Covers I'm, wor- I'm very wordy, so <laughs> I can't make anything short. <laughs> so how are you guys going to be able to talk in this podcast when you have Mrs. Wordy over here? <laughs> you know, we just butt in. You yeah. know, when we well, can. and we decided that we're probably going to split it up as well. So based on everyone's kind of niche. Mm-hmm. So that yeah. brings up the question, how are you f- going to find your topics and guests? Do you have any lined up already? Oh, yeah. Yes, we, okay. we do. We do. Okay. Yeah, so I interviewed talk- two people already and it was great for our health segment. Nice, because I'm thinking if you're doing, looking at uh, the good, bad, and the ugly, it should be fun to uh, have some debates, possibly, or? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, we we do, we do, we are going to have that in a respectful way. I'm all about being respectful and tactful and everything. We don't necessarily want to throw people under the bus, but at the same time, I believe that we should be authentic, and so certain questions <coughs> asked and everything like that like i'm not gonna be like barbara walters and make you cry but right. at the same time <laughs> at the same time questions need to be asked because um like cer- certain certain companies and everything i if i'm talking about burnout and i know that sometimes there's certain companies out there that a lot of hygienists work for however sometimes due to conditions they may contribute to burnout and they may need to fix things. And I think it's only fair to talk about those different issues instead of just glossing over that maybe they're hiring or something. I think that's only fair because I wouldn't want to um, just, you know, rep- I want us to represent each other well and to be truthful and to give everyone a chance of both sides of the coin. That's just me. Yep. And to, and to pick it back on what she's saying, you know, I've worked several, several, several different um, <laughs> uh I would say DSO, um, corporate jobs, you know, um, I've been in dentistry for approximately 16 years also. And, um, you know, they lie to us. They lie to us. And I feel like, you know, the youngins coming up, the youngins, they need to know the truth. You know, they need to know what what really is going on. If they don't know what's going on, then they're going to make poor decisions. They're going to end up in a miserable job and they're going to hate being a dental hygienist. I literally hated being a dental hygienist six months after I graduated. Like I hate it. But I love people. That's what April and I have a big passion for mentoring and working, collaborating with people like you who feel the same way and to protect these young people coming out of school because they're going to get gobbled up Mm -hmm. and they're going to take a job right away. And they're going to think, oh, I'm making a lot of money, all these promises. And six months later, they're going to hate it. I think that's all there is. That's like what Astrid was talking about, temping and getting out there. Don't, it's like getting married before you date. You don't, I have a permanent position after you met him one time or worked one day. It's like, check them out for a while. Check out other offices. Yeah. Yeah. Better. And 
And that's why I really work and coach with a lot of girls that are just straight out of school and help them find good positions and, you know, tell them that it's important to do a working interview and to make sure you scope out the office. And, you know, I was just, I just did a live the other day about interviews and, you know, what to look for and what to look out for. And, you know, that's the one thing that I strongly encourage, like, don't just accept any job. Don't just accept what they're asking for on Indeed, like knowing, going your value and your worth. And I feel like these young girls are just so, I need to get a job. I need to get a job. And it's like, yes, that's important. But at the same time, you need to find the right fit for you because you will get burnt out if you don't. And you don't want to get burnt out so early on in your career. Yeah, it's not about getting chosen so much. It's about now. It's about choosing you. Yes. Yep, choosing them and finding the right fit. I actually work with a um, technical college, and that's one of the things we work on is leadership skills and knowing your values. So that's really important coming out of hygiene school because one, you don't, you don't, you think you know everything, but you really don't. So that's what something that I focus on as well. And I think we all have something to give to the new graduate. Right? And that's one of the things that I talk about in my book. I talk about basically interviewing. And I called it like a meet cute because when you go on the interview, it's like your first date in a way you're, you want to be interviewing them, not just them interviewing you. And then you don't, I don't advise just to take that job. You should do a working interview. Like Estrita had on her live the other day. She said, you know, check, take a look at the room you're going to be working in. Mm -hmm. Some of these rooms are so small, depending on your position or if you're left-handed or different things, it's going to be uncomfortable for you to work on. Or you can also just see how the office dynamic is. Is if are people getting along, or are they catty? Do you like the instruments, or do they have an instrument budget for you? Are they going to get you a chair? All these different things you need to find out. And when I first came out of school, I was like, I just need a job. That's how I was. <laughs> I just wanted a job. I could could have cared less who hired me. I just wanted somebody to hire me. And even if they didn't give me exactly the money that like my teachers were saying, it was more money than I ever made before. Mm-hmm. And I. Re- So, but if you start low and, you know, and some, if you start lower, then you never get to where you want to be. So now I'm at the point where like, I definitely know my worth. And so it's like, no, I, this is what it is. (laughs) Like I tell people, I'm like, state your worth and add tax plus shipping and handling, (laughs) you know, go above and beyond. And then have a list of why you're worthy of that pay. Right. right. Yeah. See, we can find it right here in her book, The Ultimate Guide to Dental Dental Hygiene Burnout. I'm telling you, in the book, she like literally goes in on what we're thinking, you know, put it on paper. It's, 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 it's awesome. I'm going to start recommending that just because we talked to a lot of students too. So we'll start recommending that book to get that information now before you get out there. So I'm really glad that you teach that at the college. Yeah, Cause it's, it's about, it's, so the book isn't so much about burnout as to how to avoid burnout. Mm-hmm. So if you do these different things, then hopefully you won't be burnout. If you network right in the beginning, right. as soon as, instead of like, as soon as you get a school, you're just like, peace out. And you never yeah. see your colleagues and you're like, I, I'm done with that. I'm not going to go back to any school events or any C courses they have there or anything like that. That's that's not how dentistry works. You need to network in dentistry. It's so important. It's such a small community and such a small like network. You have to network with people. And I feel like everybody's just like, oh, I'm going to jump ship and not be a hygienist anymore. Well, you know what? There's the grass isn't always greener on the other side. You chose dentistry for a reason. Mm -hmm. Find out why you're becoming burnout or why you no longer quote unquote love dentistry and find ways to fix it, but still stay in dentistry. I think a lot of people think, oh, I'm just going to go find a new career. Well, every career has its downsides. It's about how you manage those and how you manage yourself and your overall health and your career itself to have a long, successful career. Don't I know it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not, not good still, so we can't just have everybody jump ship. We need to find a way uh, to make hygiene good again. It could be great. Exactly. It doesn't have to be horrible. You don't have to be right. Paid, you know? I went just, through chronic back pain, and that was one of the reasons why clinically I wanted to get out. And um, re- recently, I started working with a managed care organization. So really learning a lot as their health partner. That's something I think that's a lot of people's problem is it's their body goes before they go, you know, right. right. Once they get through that period of, okay, this is what I really want to do. I know this is what I want to do. Their body gets burnout and that's where ergonomics is really important. And, and knowing that, you know, no, you like the other day I had a, a office that I worked for that I had 40 minute cleanings. 
And I said to my husband, I was like, I am too old for 40 minute cleanings. I cannot, I mean, maybe when I was in my early twenties, I could, but I'm too old for that. Now I'm in my thirties. I can't do 40 minute cleanings anymore. Like half the time it takes me 10 minutes just to get everything set up in front of the patient. That's facts. Facts. You know, yeah. being in the game and I call this the game. All right. Dentistry is, dentistry is, is brutal. All right. This is the game right here. When we're in the game and it's game time and we're seeing these patients um, and, and knocking them out six, sometimes 60. So when I used to work in, in corporate, Carrie knows we have a goal in mind. When we have oh, that yeah. goal in mind, we need to knock out maybe 12, 16 patients just so that we can make our, our, Your our goal for the day. Our, yeah. Meet our goal, meet our, what we need to meet. And we burn out because one, we're doing, you know, contor- being contortionists working on these patients and, um, you know, we burn our bodies out. And one of the things that I'm, I'm very passionate about is that we need to change what we learn in school. School doesn't mm-hmm. teach us how to actually get our body ready for this job. Nobody told me that my hand was going to hurt. Nobody told me that my back's going to hurt. Nobody told me I'm going to have chronic neck pain. Nobody, Nobody had me pain. sitting on a saddle stool in hygiene school either. But here I am, temping around, with carrying my saddle stool with me everywhere I go. <laughs> exactly. And one of the, those are the things that I feel like I'm passionate about. We need to educate everyone about taking care of their body it's not mm. just about your mind your mind is one thing but your body is, is, is another thing if we don't take care of it you know i i was in so much pain i didn't i didn't realize i was so like jacked up until i went into chiropractic school not that you know all chiropractors think you know we're all jacked up i'm just saying that i didn't realize i was doing this to myself right because i wasn't taking care of my body mm. and that's one of the reasons I would have neck pain. I would have chronic upper back pain and lower back pain. Now I know what to do and, and I want everyone to know it. I love that you're on a mission ergonomically. Yeah, we to need to be. Get the word, spread the word because I'll ask Dennis fresh out of school. You know, now we're all getting older than the dentists. <laughs> Finding, you know, it's like the older I get, the younger they are. Um, I said, do you talk about ergonomics in dental school? They're like, yeah, they're touching on it a little bit. It's like, that that should be, it should be like a full on, like year long course. There should absolutely, I I definitely agree that there should be more courses on ergonomics and dentistry for sure. I I 100% can say that I did not learn anything about ergonomics other than make sure you sit up straight and your wrist is straight when you're in hygiene school, but they don't talk about why they emphasize that. They don't talk about, you know, how if you don't do this, you're never going to have a long successful career. You know what I mean? So I feel like really amplifying it and explaining why ergonomics is important, is important, not just saying, Oh, make sure you sit up straight. You're not sitting up straight. Like actually explaining why and the importance of it and everything is it, I feel like there definitely should be a course on ergonomics in school for sure. I took Dr. Joy's course um, last summer when she um, did the National Dental Hygiene Association. And she does a course on instrumentation as well as ergonomics. And what I learned about hers, in fact, I put it in the book, concern in it, was that when they teach us in school, they teach us about all the different clock positions. And that mm-hmm. doesn't necessarily work for everyone. You know, like... Karen and I are short <laughs> and everything like that. So Karen prefers, she prefers to stand and everything. I prefer to sit on, with my saddle stool and, um, you know, everyone is different. So that clock position may not necessarily work for everyone that they put us in um, because of our different statues or different sizes and everything like that. So we have to really learn what works best for us. Of course, what works best for us shouldn't be like, you know, craning over the patient because then you're going to definitely have to see Karen and everything and um you know some people like to wear loops I like to wear loops others don't like to wear loops but there's different things that we can learn to do or even with the hand ergonomics all the new different instrumentation that's coming out there but like Astrida says they don't really I think that dental hygiene school elite I don't know about dental school but dental hygiene school at least they prepare us to do our job as far as teeth but they don't prepare us in all these other ways like boundaries and work culture or say there should be like a a course that's strictly just on like life after school and how to prolong your career and how to like know your value and worth and not just 
clean teeth. I think oh, that, that sounds like in, the one we're like, that's what we're <laughs> I feel like because hygienists are so caring nature, we we put ourselves in harm's way for our patients. I mean, at my school, we were taught a lot about ergonomics, but when I started out in pedo, I found myself doing all these motions to, you know, one, this crying kid trying to get them out of the chair quickly, but I found myself putting my body in jeopardy more so than the patient. And the patient is just going to be there an hour versus us repetitive, repetitively yeah. doing these things. So I've been practicing 17 years and I didn't start having back pain probably to the last three years of my career, but I definitely know I could have taken better care of myself. I think that with me, it was like what Karen said, having worked in um, so much corporate and, you know, when you're younger, because when I graduated when I was 25, I'm like 41 now, like, you know, maybe you can see a million people, you're hustling, you're doing what yeah. you have to do. But in my case, as you get older, you're just like, I'm not seeing all those people and everything. Like, I'm not breaking up my body. Like, you know, like I may look younger, but my bones know how old I am. And so we have to really take care of ourselves throughout our whole career mm -hmm. so that we can have longevity. So we don't have to have different surgeries and things. So like Tamika said, they, they may teach us, but I feel we also have patients who we t sell, say turn. And they turn for a second and they go right back. And so after saying that so many times, you're just like, oh, and you just, you know, let me get you out of here. Or, you know, we have patients who you just start putting them back a little bit. And they're like, oh, you know, you're just like yelling in your head, how do you sleep? How do you sleep? <laughs> you know, because they how don't want do to go sleep? back. So sometimes we do these things to ourselves. And sometimes we just want to hurry up and get this patient done and out of here because we're tired of trying to get them in the proper ergonomics for ourselves. Yeah. And then being able to say, I need a bathroom break. I need a lunch break. Cause when you first start out, you just want to please so much. You want to get that gold right. star or whatever. Be a people pleaser. Yeah. It's like, you know, we have to um, pee and eat and, you know, and we shouldn't have to do it at the same time. Right. So to get to that point, eventually I was like, you know what? I don't care if I'm running behind. It's not my fault. The patient was late. It's not my fault. You made me wait. I'm gonna never had that problem. Because I've never, mm -mm, I've never uh, had. That. I am not. I'm, <laughs> I'm eating I'm all day long. <laughs> I'm like, listen. <laughs> I will say I have hypoglycemia. I will, <laughs> but I'm gonna go eat and I'm gonna go pee. Like I don't. When people tell me like, oh, I didn't pee all day because of my schedule, and I'm like, what? <laughs> tell the patient you sit here and I go yeah Look, I go to the bathroom like yeah I have been hospitalized for kidney stones more than one time yes as a hygienist yeah. I'm not playing that game no more okay yeah. I told my patient like the last time uh just hold on I gotta go pee I'm sorry I was so blunt I, I can't I, I can't I, I need to go all right I'm to the point now where I have a strict 15 minute rule if you're 15 minutes late I'm not seeing you I don't care if I'm the temp there I don't care if I'm your full-time employee. It's not fair to the patient and it's not fair to me to expect to do my same job in less amount of time and you can't show up on time to your appointment. Don't Sorry. You they show up late and they have to use the restroom. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Kill me. Kill me. me. They're not doing for an exam, but that day they have a Tuesday. And they're like, or they've been sitting in the waiting room for 15 yeah. minutes and then as soon as they come to your yeah. room, they want to use the bathroom. Oh, like, where's the restroom? Pet pee. I tell them, if, if you wait, feel free to use the restroom while you're waiting. You don't have to, I don't have to hold your hand. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's yeah, that's a whole other topic. Those <laughs> part about the ergonomics too with the room when you're when you're working in different offices because I've worked in an office before where this tray was in my way and so I was avoiding this this table the whole time and I oh didn't find it the dentist. I worked with it forever and he's like, oh, we'll just chop it off. I'm like, thank you. You know, so you can also ask for provisions too, and you know, let the people know that you need these things because they don't know. They think that we're all super women, but and I think that's the biggest thing is you have to talk like communication you have, to ask, you, have yes. to, you have to ask and I think that's especially with new grads but even just in general like I was always for the longest time always afraid to say something to somebody because I didn't you know I needed that job I needed to be employed you know I was the breadwinner of my family I couldn't afford to lose my job so I was afraid to ask for things but the older and older I got and the more 
I would got better at communicating and, and communicating with my boss and communicating with my office manager, you know, the more I was not afraid to ask for things. I was not afraid to be like, Hey, listen, you know, I need this in order for me to be able to do my job properly, or I need that. Um, so I think just, you know, really, really helping people learn to communicate properly is really important too. I think that's the big problem that a lot of hygienists have. I know that that's I can talk, but as far as like sometimes communicating my needs or like I say in my book, like I'm a runner, like I have fled for confrontation. So, but what I've learned is you have to, you have to ask for what you want. So a lot of times hygienists will come on the different forums and they be like, I can't get any instruments. Did you ask for any instruments? Right, right. Oh, you didn't ask. So the doctor may just assume that you're good because he's not using the instruments. Did you ask for um, a chair? Did you ask for some provisions in your room? So a lot of times we don't even ask or, you know, I've been making the same amount of money for 10 years. These new grads are coming out and making all this money and coronavirus. Okay, did you ask for a race? Did you learn how to ask? You know, so it's sometimes it's us because we are afraid. So many of us are afraid of everything. And I put myself in that category. I've definitely gotten much better. And I think it does come with, um, you know, having dealt with so many situations and just finding your voice and getting sick of it and just being like, what am I afraid for? Like, they're not any better than me. Like, they just went to school a couple more years. Like, you know, they're not, it's not like they're just a different profession sometimes. And I know they don't like it. We know some things better <laughs> and everything <laughs> like that. It just comes with experience. Yeah. yeah so definitely. over time, so that's one thing that I do encourage um, my colleagues is to really find your voice and to go about asking for what you want. And at times when you ask for what you want, then they give it to you, You'll get some instruments. Maybe you don't get like, all the instruments you want that month, but you can negotiate on getting maybe a couple packs a month until you get what you need, or, you know, maybe you'll get the Cavatron that you want. So a lot of it is communication and preparing yourself, like how to ask for a raise. Don't just go in there and say, I need a raise because my mortgage rate went up. No, you have to prepare <laughs> yourself and show you how- show, you, show your what, value. The, the practice and why you deserve a raise, not like, you know, because, you know, yeah, we all got bills. <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to add, you know, um, Karen made a great point. You know, you can't just sit there and just feel things are going to fall into your lap. You have to do your research. Mm-hmm. What's really going on out there in your field? What is current? What's needed? What can I do to make a difference? We can't always play the victim. Playing the victim gets you nowhere. I mean, I'm sorry. I tell my daughter that. You think you're going to cry again and get what you want? It doesn't work all the time. You have to figure out what the problem is and try and solve it. I'm not crying, guys. I'm not crying, I swear. <laughs> it's allergies. But um, the, the, the facts are we have to be able to stand up for ourselves, do the research. And, you know, Carrie knows me. I'm the queen of receipts. I'm a, if I talk to you one time and you don't give me the answer I want, I'm going to email you the same conversation and 10 other people. So that means me and 10 other people know exactly what we all talk about because that's how I get what I want. I'm sorry, it's a little, it's a little devious, but it's, it's one of the ways that works for me. And I find that if we try, <laughs> yeah, seriously, right? If, if you can't, if you can't, if you don't feel comfortable neg- uh, talking to someone or negotiating someone um, verbally, put it on paper, or in this case, on, in an email and express yourself, get the facts together and express yourself that way. And this way, there can be, nothing can be misconstrued because you were to the point. And, and that's something I learned. I wasn't, I wasn't always like this. I was always this little sweet one that was quiet. Care Bear. No, Care Bear's dead. I'm, I'm the Black Bear now. <laughs> and, <laughs> sorry, man. I'm the Black Bear now. And now I have to, I, ha- I had to learn that I can't always be the people pleaser. And um, we have to speak the, our truths and, and have tact, of course, and, and be respectful. But we have to learn to stand up for ourselves. If we're always getting walked over on and be that doormat, then you'll never get what you want in the office. You'll be out of the career like this. Yeah. Yeah. You'll burn, you, you will burn out really, really, really easily. And if you don't get what you need, that's when you have to make a decision what you're going to do. What's your next move? Right. Right. That's exactly, that's exactly what I believe. So if you, you don't have to stay, there's so many different opportunities out there. And sometimes we're afraid of the next office being just as bad or worse than the other office. And that's not necessarily the case. So we have to leap and get out there instead of just staying in a horrible position or being bullied or not getting what we want or making a lot less money than we deserve. Like, 
this one job, I was lead hygienist and everything. And then they start cutting things and messing up my bonus and then giving me all this work and then traumatizing me and doing all this stuff. And it's like, oh, I'm supposed to stay <laughs> and everything. And so when I left, I got a better job. In fact, I bossed up so much to an interview. He was like, how much do you want? And I, I was like, all of it. <laughs> and everything. I was like, because I'm worth it, you know, like, <laughs> and I got it and everything like that. And it, the job worked out really well for me and helped me to really work on other things in my business. So we can't be afraid and just stay in certain situations out of fear. Now, Karen mentioned Care Bear, and that is my nickname. Everywhere I go, that ends up being my nickname because I just care too freaking much and everything, which is good. But at the same time, I'm recognizing that just because I care about others doesn't mean that I care, care about myself and have boundaries. So right. that's something that we also have to learn is to have different boundaries. Because if you don't have boundaries in place, then people will constantly step on your boundaries or mm -hmm. constantly take advantage of you. So you just have to speak your truth and have boundaries. Yeah, we train people how to treat us, right? I've learned that. So we're oh my goodness. So if we treat ourselves poorly, they're going to treat us poorly too. Absolutely. Sometimes you have to leave because you are that punching bag. You're already in that position. And that's who you are. That's who they think you are. So it's really hard to get them to change, even though you've changed. So sometimes you have to leave. And it might be worse someplace else. But that's okay. You're leaving. And if you don't, the universe is going to push you out. Like with pain. Right. Push you out because of pain. And it got so bad. I was like, okay, I'm listening. And it worked I out. You have to do it. I always say a lesson will continue to repeat itself until you learn from that lesson. So like if like with me, if I keep getting bullied in almost every office that I'm working at, in a sense, it is something wrong with me. Yes, the bully is horrible, but there's something about my personality in that I'm allowing them to treat me a certain way or they're seeing me as the easy target, the easy victim. So once you start exercising that, people are like, oh, well, don't mess with her. Cause she won't she won't like it or you know like karen has all this documentation like you know so now i was like um like come for me i wish you would come on come on i got built up frustrations you know like and right now it's like i'm hormonal you know <laughs> so come for me let me release i went through this time where um my my um office manager on multiple multiple occasions she mentioned how oh i wish I, I, I made as much as you or you make double my salary. And because I was trying to grow within this company, I allowed that. I actually didn't stand up for myself. And then when I finally did, I felt so empowered. I, I thought it was going to be at the point, like you said, Cindy, where I had to leave. And actually she ended up, she ended up resigning from the position and I actually ended up getting a promotion. So we have to teach people how to treat us. That is never again. See, that's when, when the black bear comes out. See, I used to be Care Bear too. I'm still Care Bear, but now I'm Black Bear. Because we used to just, you know, that, I hate when people do that. They think that because you're sweet and you're nice, that you can just be walked on over and, and, and your feelings not taken into consideration. I mean, I had to get, you know, I really had to stand up for myself. You know, working in corporate for these different companies, they, they make you feel as if you're nothing and you easily be replaced. And the truth is they really can't. <laughs> Karen and I can laugh about a certain job because <laughs> we, we can't, they can't replace us. We keep laughing. They literally cannot replace us. It's been like, how many years, girl? Like, yeah, like four years? Five, yeah, yeah three, three, four years. They, they just can't replace us. They still they, try to recruit us weekly. <laughs> Like, like seriously. And I hear about what's going on in those offices and it's because they... We're not treating their staff correctly. And if you don't treat people They're with... They're always looking for new staff members, team members. Yeah, literally. The, the height, the, the oh, turnover is... No retention. I'm actually trying to... I'm actually trying to help them out. I'm trying to, you know, bait them in so that I can help them and everything. But they, you know, they're, they're watching me, but they haven't made that bite yet. But basically, I really do like corporations. So I don't want us to be like dogging corporations. I like that they have certain protocols in place because a number of private offices, they don't, they're, they're mm -hmm. not good with Paradano protocol. So they're just no people to death or different systems, or, you know, maybe they don't give good benefits or vacation and everything like that. So mm -hmm. a number of the corporations I've worked at, they are better in those different things. Mm -hmm. The problem is at times the work culture. And so they, they, because they have so many different locations, 
even though the head location says that this is our work culture, all these other people, or especially if there's different doctors or franchises, they let things happen. So it's kind of like when you see on the news, like something happened at this one particular Starbucks. So if Starbucks itself has, this is how we want things to run. But then you have this one manager who's like going against or they're going to do whatever they want. They cause the problem. And so unfortunately, at a lot of these different corporations, you'll read on Glassdoor or, or um, Indeed.com, the common denominator is how, they, how the people there may treat one another or the bullying that goes on. So the protocols may be pretty good. Um, they may sometimes have to work on making sure that the hygiene is, is being assisted more or the schedule's not crazy, you know, that it's reasonable or not all about production. But the problem that I've experienced and Karen has experienced at times is just basically how they actually treat the workers. And that's that's the problem. That's why they can't really find or retain employees. That's why they're offering these huge sign-on bonuses. And so they bait you in. And believe me, I loved my bonuses. I went all over the world. However, you know, at the expense almost of losing my mind. So that's that's what I want to really help is help these companies fix their work culture so that we will be able to do our job as hygienists and then they can find good employees. You know, there's so many consultants that are just out there. Uh, I've done consulting a lot. And what we do is go in and we just want to increase the numbers, increase the numbers. How would we increase the numbers? And I'd go in and sit down with the doctor just observing for half an hour, I'm like, I can tell you your problems. That's not your problem. Here's your problem. Here's your solution. Treat your, listen to your employees. I listen to your employees for half an hour. I have all the answers. Now, if you just listen to them for half an hour, right. you have your answers, just listen to them. I think yeah. that's the biggest problem is there's just a really lack of communication between the employees and the doctors. And half the time, and I say this all the time, half the time, the doctors don't have the slightest idea what's going on in the back. They don't have the slightest idea what the hygienists are complaining about because I feel like sometimes the office managers either just don't relay the information to them or they only relay the information that they want to hear to them. Or I've even had office managers tell me that they just don't want to relay that information to them because they don't want to overwhelm or upset the doctor. Well, that's not how you keep employees. You need to inform the doctor because if he doesn't know, then you can't. he's not going to change anything and you don't necessarily have the authority to change everything. So sometimes those uncomfortable conversations have to be had with the doctor in order for things to get better. You mean the truth? <laughs> that's, yeah, exactly. That's the truth. Yeah. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Cindy, I wanted to really applaud you for doing that because, you know, a lot of hygienists or staff, they hate when a consultant comes in. They're just like, Ugh, you know, because they're like, they're going to come in and tell us we have to do, everyone has to get fluoride. Everyone has to get a panel all day long. You know, they just are saying that because some consultants are just about production. Of course, that's what the doctor wants. They're paying a consultant this fee and they want to, you know, see that, that, that productive rate or things. The ROI. Like mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Estrada. <laughs> I just feel like, you know, yeah, yeah these inc consultants come in and they want to bring productivity, but I feel like it's not just about the productivity. I feel like if you come in and you create a positive office culture and people want to work there, the money will come. Right. They'll, they'll want to, you know, educate their patients more and they'll want to be there and they'll want to actually genuinely serve your patients, which at the end of the day should be your priority, not the money, you know, and and, and if you do it in the right way, the money will come. The money will come as your office culture gets better, as your hygienists and your dental assistants feel valued and they feel like you care about them being there. That'll come as with time. But I feel like they kind of just skip that and they just want to go straight to production. Well, I'm actually in a good position. I'm, at, I'm an assistant, actually, been for 25 years. But anyway, I'm training this office, the assistant team. It's a big practice, four doctors. And uh, crazy. Yeah. And um, so they do everything, which I don't always agree with. But anyway, but the, the patriarch of the office, he doesn't practice anymore, but he's 80. He outright still owns the practice. But I feel very fortunate. He's, he takes value in what I have to say. Because, That's good. Yeah. And she, he has a lead assistant that not all the assistants are quite listening to, but we're working on that. And I make sure to always include her in all these decisions. So I want her to feel valued. Like I'm not trying to step on your toes or take your job. I walk with you, not in front of you. So I want you to feel valued and, and 
relay any sort of concerns you have and, and um, you know, get the team to, to respond. And, and the key not, word there is valued, feeling yeah. valued. Right, right. And for, for them to feel valued, they're going to want to work harder and know what your vision is, vision is, and then they'll follow it. Just, just about every job that I, I've left in the industry has been because I felt a lack of appreciation. Because yep. when I come in there, I give 150%. I will act like the office is mine. I, I, you know, see so much potential in the office. And so if I feel that I'm not being valued or appreciate, appreciate, appreciate it, appreciate it, <laughs> then eventually I do leave or, you know, I'm on a, Indeed. I'm on a deed all day long. <laughs> like, you know, okay, fit, bye, bye, Karen. And then I'm like, <laughs> in up my room and like, what well, they have to offer, you know, <laughs> looking on there. Do you want to go to core dental staffing or on DM, right? <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> and, and then the facts are, you know, you, 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 you spend your time there and sometimes they just don't value what you value. And when you realize that you have spent eight hours a day, years upon years somewhere and they don't value what you value how are you supposed to work for someone like that you know one one job i mean i didn't i didn't know if i had another backup job i just straight walked out they asked me you know i have much i have an eight-year-old and she had an injury and I, and she was at home and she has to go back to school and i said well look my kids come first and i need to make sure that you know work-life balance is is there you know, are you willing to make me move to a position that's closer to home? And they said, no. So, well, bye. I'm out. And it, and it just led to show me that it, you know, of course, you know, 10,000 emails later, yes. Karen knows that, <laughs> 10,000 emails later, but it showed me that, you know, I need to make sure I value myself. So even though I have all this experience and I've been there, you know, different places, the bottom line is you have to think about what is important with your values and what aligns with your values. Mm -hmm. If those things don't align, then you're not in the right place and you need to move on. And, you know, I mean, it's like you don't have to be working the same place for 50 years. I mean, I think that's boring. You need to be able to challenge yourself, step out, do different things. The the worst you can say is, man, I wish I, I, wish I had tried that or man, I'm so glad I tried that. You know, it can go either way. If you didn't, if you don't do it, how, how are you going to know? You know, you know how many people doubted me when I said I'm going to go to chiropractic school? They're like, oh my God, are you crazy? You make so much money as a hygienist. I'm like, well, yeah, but I don't feel satisfied. I don't feel fulfilled and I need to, to, to do something else, right? I challenge myself. I put my family through stress and strain, but it's worth it in the end, I think. You know, if I didn't do it, then I would be thinking, what if? And and that's how we should look at our lives. We can't live our life and say, what if? You know, if we said, if we didn't do half the things that we wanted to do, we wouldn't have dental ailments right now, right? You guys right. have branched out into your own things. You know, I used to only think dental hygiene was dental hygiene. Now I'm beginning to learn that we can branch out into all these different fields and avenues and so take- So many opportunities. There. Yeah, it's, it, it's, 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 if you can, if you can foresee it, you can believe it. It can become a, a real thing. It was supposed yeah. to sound better, but it came out that way. <laughs> you know what, though, sometimes if you can it believe just it, takes... you can achieve it. Exactly. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. We'll and find sometimes it, it later. takes. <laughs> it, sometimes it takes falling down before you actually, you know, get up and do what you wanted to do. Like I say this all the time. You know, I got fired from two jobs. And I literally was starting to think like, oh my God, is there something wrong with me? Like, why do I keep getting fired? You know what I mean? But in reality, it wasn't me. I thought it was, but it wasn't. But it, that's what took me to start my staffing agency. You know, it had always been the dream. It's what I wanted to do from when I started out of school, but I would always get in, you know, a job and I'd get into the, the flow and I'd be like, all right, well, I'll worry about it later. I'll worry about it later. And, you know, it took failure and feeling like a failure for me to be like, you know what? No, I'm a bad a woman and <laughs> and I can do this. I am going to start my staffing agency. I'm going to be awesome. I had thousands of people that told me, Shruta, why are you starting a staffing agency? Like, do you know how many staffing agencies there are out there? Yeah, there's a lot of staffing agencies out there, but none of them are me. None of them have the hashtag Shruta effect. And none of them are going to treat their agencies like I treat my agency. They're not going to treat their their clients like I treat my clients. When I 
you know, work with my clients, I treat them like they're, uh, like they're like, I'm them. Like I would want to be treated. You know, I say, when I send someone into an office, I interview the office before I send them in there, because if I wouldn't feel comfortable sending them in there, why would I want to send a temp in there that I wouldn't even feel comfortable going into? So I really, you know, I make it a point to be different from everybody else, because at the end of the day, there are, anybody could choose everybody. There's lots of things you could choose from, lots of staffing agencies, lots of consultants, lots of speakers, but nobody is you. And that's it. Nobody is you. That's right. And there's plenty of room for everybody. There's plenty exactly. of room. I go to hygiene school. There's already a lot of hygienists. Why be a chiropractor? I mean, there's, there's an abundance. A million. Of a million. Everybody. Yeah. So I think it's great. And you have that little thing knocking on you. Like you said, you always wanted to own a staffing agency. It's been in the back of your mind. You, you might have wanted to be a chiropractor this whole time. I used to want to be too. But it knocks on you and it's going to keep knocking. So it, it, Eventually something's going to happen. I know that like, I've always wanted to be an author. In my senior year, I won an um, award, the Helen Ferguson Award for my school, who's she was an um, uh, author at our school and, and everything. So I've always written poetry and everything. And then it took it took the pandemic and the shutdown for me to like start writing my book and everything and thinking about all those experiences that I've had. And then I always thought about teaching and everything. And then, you know, I didn't, I haven't gotten my bachelor's. I've been accepted several times. And then I'm like, ah, I don't feel like doing that <laughs> work or anything. But however, I started through social media, someone contacted me and I started speaking to the school in Brooklyn virtually about dental hygiene. And now I've been offered a position in September to basically teach courses to the students about not just dental hygiene, but just different professions they can go into and everything. So I'll be an actual instructor for um, the school. So just That's different awesome. opportunities can come towards you and everything. You just have to go for them. And I've always um, spoke. I won different awards when I was in high school and um, different scholarships and th things like that. And, you know, all those little trophies they give you and everything like that. I've always wanted to do these things. So <laughs> when you just have to do what you want to do. And the thing is, is like a street was saying in our minds, sometimes we just think hygiene is limited. Like all day long, I'll see in forums, like there's nothing else to do or other than be a teacher or a pharmaceutical rep or whatever. And there's a lot of different things. You so can many things. So network, network, network. Because the more you network, the more you're going to find opportunities. Yeah, Absolutely. There's so many different, like now I'm an Arm and Hammer representative too. So I'm like the Renaissance woman. I got it. I'm doing everything and getting rebirth this baby. So we'll see how it happens. But at the same time. <laughs> Start saying yes and trying new things. And now it's like, now I have to learn how to say no. Now it's like, okay, no, I want to, but no, 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 no. You have to. You well, do have to say no. Yes, or you can say no, right? But as Strita just finished reading the book, I recommend it to her. The, the year, year of I, yes. Sunder, I'm like, I try not to say no too much. If, if I know it's out of my realm or I'm not quite there yet, I will say um, I know someone who can do a better job than I can at this time. And so I will recommend some other colleagues. I'll maybe give them either one specific one who's really good for that, or I'll recommend three for them to choose. So I will defer for someone to get, you know, get something. And just like people do that to me, like a street will tag me like, oh, Carrie can speak on this. Or I'll tag anytime I see something about Tempe, I'm like, a street or anything yeah. about an ergonomics, Karen, no. and everything <laughs> like that. So yes, Absolutely. you do. I do believe that you should say yes, because you never know you're if that's going to be the perfect opportunity. So had I said no that one time for speaking for that school, then I wouldn't have gotten this opportunity. Right. And, but at the same time, in the book, The Year Yes, you also have to learn when to say no. So you're just not constantly saying yes. Right. But as a people pleaser, um, in the past, maybe we said yes when we wanted to say no. Like, you know, can you do this? Can you do this? Can you do this? And we did it just so we would seem like a nice person. But you're saying yes for yourself for opportunities, not yes to do, you know, other people's work. I think I've been saying yes this year, but yes to the opportunities that I'm really passionate about. So I had something come up in a subject matter that I'm no longer really interested in. And I was like, you know what? Um, I, I refer to someone else. So really saying yes to things that you are passionate about. I think that's important as well. I stepped out of my box with speaking at the Dentistry's Got Talent um, competition. 
competition because normally what I speak about is burnout and hostile work environment. Normally, I don't speak about diversity. So when they had the category for me for diversity and Elijah's like, well, I really want you to speak with the panel for diversity. I was like, okay, <laughs> and everything. Because to me, that can be like, a, and I said that in my speech, it can be triggering because there's, it's, it's a good topic, but at the same time, it can be a sad topic. So when I wrote my speech, I wrote it in a way that was catered to me as, instead of just talking about it, how most people may talk about diversity and everything. But I understand what Tamika is saying. But at the same time, I knew that it was a really good opportunity for me. So I said yes. However, I had it in a way that was still being authentic to myself and my personality. But mainly, I like to speak about what I know the most about is burnout and hostile work environments. Like I can speak about diversity, but it's I have to speak about it in a certain way so that I don't get sad. <laughs> I don't know. You rocked it, girlfriend. Well, thank you. <laughs> who, who else is going to go up there very pregnant and rock it? Right? Like literally about to give birth. Mm. Well, I feel like if it had happened, I would have won. But <laughs> <laughs> right? You should have birthed that baby on that stage. It would have went viral. I would have been viral. <laughs> would have been it wouldn't have been a good thing. It would have been a good thing. But... <laughs> But speaking from your heart, too, that's a little, when you're speaking more emotion, which is great, because it'd be better for speaking, which I'm sure, I know you're really passionate about, um, like, empowering people and um, burnout and things like that, too. But something like that, that comes from your heart and emotion, just writing, because I'm writing, too, and it's, it takes it out of you a lot more, I think. And to share yeah. that piece with you, I think is amazing. So I'm sure it's wonderful. I can't wait to listen. It's, it's good to be vulnerable. So it was good because I was vulnerable. And like, I did say some stuff that I was, I initially wasn't going to say. Like when I said um, another screen, another screen, another screen, I that was just ab and everything. I guess it just came up, you know, thinking about like, unfortunately, what we see daily on television. And, you know, so it's like, it's like you, you want to watch the news and you don't want to watch the news <laughs> and everything like that. It's like, let's put on some Disney Plus and everything. So. <laughs> totally you have to take a news break for sure because it's, it's you just can't even process everything you don't even know what's really going on and yeah. especially in the social media world it's like you know how you gotta you gotta think for yourself in your your own heart and stuff yeah because if not you're turned into a hermit you'll be like you know what let me just get this instacart going and like <laughs> you know <laughs> my son will never meet anybody <laughs> because the world is a scary place yeah so it was great um i'm excited you get on your podcast what kind of topics do you guys have coming up or can you share this our podcast is where people tell the secrets and reveal things that nobody else knows oh cool so well um we feed you beer to get you to tell the truth <laughs> yeah we, <laughs> drunk <the> history <laughs> Well, we, I had well, 12 of the uh, podcasters I spoke with. One was, um, so I, I had two podcasters. One talked about treating back pain and how it affects dentistry. And the other one was a dental hygienist who actually trains other hygienists into ergonomics and preventing back pain and, and um, lo longevity. And, you know, they revealed lots of truths that we need to keep in mind and um, tips that we can carry through and really help to elongate our career. Because, uh, you know, once you've invested money into your career, you don't really want to switch your career if you've been in something for 30 years, if you don't have to, um, or if you can learn to do it better. So they, they gave some really good tips, some really good inside tips, stuff that you would have to pay for. So um, that will be very beneficial to our audience. Now, Karen, are you going to market yourself as a hygienist, former hygienist, and, and specifically work on dental people? Well, well I, right now, um, I, I'm still a practicing hygienist, and I'm a chiropractor, and it sounds crazy, but um, I'm marketing myself as, uh, yes, in the dental, in dental world, to, to talk about um, ergonomics. I'm also trying to get I think we can do so much more for people with TMJ as dental hygienists. So those are my two loves right there. And in um, chiropractic world, um, I'm I'm trying to also bring more awareness that chiropractors can help people in the dental world. Because, you know, chiropractors get a bad rap. They only think people, chiropractors are about motor vehicle accidents. And, you know, you only go to them, you go, th you go to them once, you go to them forever. But really and truly, there are other things that we can do to help 
prevent disease and injury. So that's how I'm marketing myself. It's kind of all over the place, kind of like my brain, but um, <laughs> that's that's me. I remember going to a chiropractor once and she said, no, I have a lot of patients that work in dentistry. I said, I believe it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what I am have um, going on is I want to talk to a couple different people. So I made a connection um, last week being an Arm & Hammer rep, where one of the people who wants to, or who booked to do a lunch and learn with me, she actually is a hygienist in California who has her own mobile practice. So she has two assistants underneath her, and then she has her own um, mobile van or bus or whatever, where she goes and treats people. So I thought that would be interesting to have on the podcast. And I know Karen has someone else as well who's in Maine who has their, is it Maine? Um, oh, Yeah. I just I remembered. Yes, so she's in Maine. She's actually a dental therapist. So she does, um, you know, uh, certain types of fillings, extractions. She's almost like her own practitioner. And um, she's in Maine. Uh, we're going to try and get her, I think, in May to do a, a, an, in- an interview with her. I think that's interesting. I want to see how she's actually navigating you know, not crushing anyone's toes in a dental office with a dentist. That's going to be interesting. I want to see how is she doing her job and and not, you know, having this rivalry with the dentist. And the two people who I plan on interviewing in the future is going to be, one is one of the leaders in our field who um, talks about um, oral cancer. She trains us about how to really um, spot it and all the different techniques. So she's awesome. And then another person who I always talk about is... um, someone who made the face shield. She made a, a face shield for all of us because of the pandemic and us being having a shortage of that. So we have a number of people that are lined up and we will have different people come on the podcast. So we have a lot of connections. And I have a hygiene director. She's a, a hygiene director of a large DSO. So for that, the truth, <laughs> That's one of she's, but she she is an awesome leader. She 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 really is. Yep, we have that, and then there's a lady that I will be interviewing about dental marketing and talking about dental marketing. And it's great that there's so many of you that you have you can conquer and divide and have great topic interviews. Do yeah. you guys plan on releasing a new episode weekly or every other week, or have you decided that yet? We I haven't decided that. that. I think I don't, I don't think, I think we think we're decided. looking at biweekly. Yeah, maybe that once we get everything together. Because weekly is a lot. We, like we said, we all have our own businesses and we all will be, well, I'm still baking for another week, but we all will be mothers. It's <laughs> <Right? laughs> really going to be busy, right? Yeah, yes. so we all are doing yes. a million different things. So we, we also, a big part of everything is making sure that we're being reasonable. So even though we are ambitious and we have all these different things that we're doing and about empowering one another, we also want to make sure that we're giving the necessary time to our families. Yes. It's all about balance. And that's what we do every other week as well, because of that reason or else, I mean, I love it and it's fun, but you have to balance everything else with it. And it's so important to do that. That's one thing we also learn as we mature or season. What do we say? April? Yeah, you know, we're, we're seasoned. Yeah. Well, season is always better than non-seasoned, so. That's right. We need spice. We're yeah, here the proper we're here seasoning. To spice up the young ends. Right. Yeah, they didn't go conquer and colonize everything not to have spices, so. Yeah. <laughs> right. I'm saying I was right, but, you know, we do enjoy the spices. Yes, I love spices. Well, I could talk to you guys all night. I mean, yeah. all, we have a lot in common, and we have a passion for um, helping other um, hygienists, dental professionals, assistants as well, April, keeping, keeping them, um, keeping them empowered and knowing their worth. And so I'm really glad to, um, meet you guys. Hopefully we, cl- hopefully we can collaborate more together in spreading our, spreading our word and our mission. Yes. That we, we definitely enjoyed being on here and we definitely Absolutely. enjoyed you talking with us, April. I think many of us are, um, are dental assistants as well. We started off. I know I did. I did too. Dental assistants as well. So I was an orthodontist assistant too. Yeah, I, I that, was one whenever my dentist couldn't find a dent- dental assistant. That was interesting. Yeah. Was I was just awful at it, yeah, but I was, I was one. Right. <laughs> oh, the world's worst dental assistant. That's me. <laughs> hey, thanks for being an assistant and uh, getting that perspective for a while. I don't know. It's important. That's, I mean, that's why I never want to be a prima donna hygienist because I know like all that assistants do and how they help be the backbone of 
the like hygiene hygiene may be the blood of the office, but assistants are definitely the backbone and I they do a heck of a lot. So Yeah, I know. think every assistant I'm like, Thank you because I can't do what you do. I've tried, I was awful at it, I can't like and they, they do, they do so much for the office. And I mean, I'm, I ask them for stuff too. And, and I appreciate them very much. Well, thank you. And they get to work with the doctor the whole time. Ah, oh, scary. <laughs> yeah. Any, <laughs> so anytime they're able to help us, I'm so appreciative. I'm like, oh, it's just any help you can get. Cause you know, they're super busy too. So. And I oh, yeah. them as well, you know, it works both ways. So. I assist the assistants a lot of the time. Like, yeah, you? same. And I always try to show appreciation. Um, and get presents and gifts and everything mm -hmm. and not, not just around assistance week, especially when I worked at corporations and they help with my schedule or help with different things. You know, I, I try to like buy lunch and do all different things. So it's very, just like I want to feel appreciated. It's an, it's important that we everyone. make sure everyone feels appreciated at the office. Yes. And, and that goes a long way yes. with people. Yeah. Tell the doctors it's, it's absolutely free to say thank you. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> ROI it comes back to spades it's true it's true it's free because if not it gets expensive because then you leave <laughs> so. exactly cupcake employee retention mm -hmm. yeah well thank you for having us yeah on thank here. you again for having us it's been great it. thank you bye thank you, thank you so much bye, bye. cheers cheers bye. cheers bye, bye. ladies thanks bye. for having us